Hello, I'm just, we're going to have this part of the show be called Guitar Talk. I'm going to talk about guitar because a lot of people ask me questions about different things. So I'm just going to start at the beginning like I do with all my students and, and just go from there and hang on. I think you guys will find uh, some of this of interest. Uh, this is a guitar. This side of the guitar is called the neck. This side is called the body. Now on the neck, it's broken down in different pieces. You have the peg head or headstock. The things that tune these strings are called string tuners, guitar tuners. The front side of the neck is called the fretboard. These little metal pieces where we press down are called frets, hence why we call it the fretboard. Obviously the back of the neck and where the neck joins the body is called the heel. On the body we have the shoulders and we have the hips. We have an end pin. Since this is an acoustic guitar we have a sound hole and the, the decoration around the sound hole is called a rosetta. This part here is called a pick guard to protect the face of the guitar from uh, your fingers as well as from using the pick. Uh, this part right here, this whole unit here is called the bridge. The, the light colored part is called the saddle. And the back up just for a second on the neck, the same color item up here is called a nut. These are the string pins that hold the strings in. And, and, and a, a lot of guitars, acoustic guitars and, and some electrics, you'll see the, the light coloring around the edges made out of various materials. And that's binding, and that's put there to protect the instrument. And you'll see it on the neck. So this particular guitar does not have that. And being an acoustic guitar, this has bronze strings. Other guitars, you, uh, classical guitars, uh, use silk and nylon strings. Electric guitars use um, a nickel-based string, unless they're using flat-wound strings, and those may be nylon tapes. There's a whole variety of materials on strings. Now, when you look at the guitar and you see where you press the, the, the height of pressing the string down, that's called the action. And the, the, on acoustic instruments, it tends to be a little bit higher than it is on electric instruments, so you can get some more volume. On a classical guitar, the body meets at the 12th fret, where on uh, acoustic guitars, the metal string guitars, the, it can meet at the 12th fret, but usually it meets at the 14th fret, which is what this guitar is. And they come in all different sizes. This is a double O size guitar, there's triple O size guitars. The dreadnought size guitar, which is uh, uh, the, the adult size guitar, you say, I prefer the smaller body guitars. They have a little bit better uh, harmonic upper range and, and clarity in the studio. Nothing wrong with the dreadnoughts. They're beautiful instruments. It's a, it, like everything in life, it's just a personal preference. Now, what I do with um, my students is I give them what I call jumping jacks or calisthenics. And um, whenever you play, first start playing guitar, I always tell them use the tip of your fingers right here and you're going to experience some discomfort. This will hurt regardless if it's nylon or metal strings. Since you're using muscles and ligaments and tendons uh, that you usually use only in playing uh, musical instruments, sometimes with the keyboard, uh, now that's more prevalent in society, you use those there, but not to the same extent as playing the musical instrument. So you'll experience some pain, some discomfort all the way up your fingers, up to your arms, into your shoulder. And that's normal. The more you practice, that goes away. And uh, so th that's part of the goal of practicing is to eventually build up those muscles and tendons and calluses on the tip of your fingers to where the painful part goes away. The next part you have to deal with is the eye-hand coordination. Be, be able to just tell your hands to go where you want them to go and then produce the sound out of the instrument. Now what I do uh, with my students is I want them to be able to, to play and get a tone, regardless if they're using their finger or a pick, and then press down using the tip here, and I tell them to, to come and do their fingers like this, and play this chromatic, as, as it's called. And you, your hands can only get this close, but you can teach them to stretch. So the, the, this exercise, you hold your fingers down, and you try to always put each finger at the same place near the fret, not on top of the fret, not too far away from the fret, but right there about uh, fingers width from at the fret. So you get a clear tone. By holding the fingers down, you're building up strength and you're teaching your hand to slowly stretch so that you can eventually get and play these different chords. And now by doing this, you need to next thing you need to focus on is doing it evenly spaced. So at first I always tell everybody to go really slow but make it all even space 
and be able to go up and down and to do this on every string. So you can start with an open or you can start by pressing down. But you want it to be even. And get used to teaching your hand to, to go through and do things. Yeah, I had an oyster there. I see you smiling over there. So we want to get all these sounds out of all the strings and teaching your hand to come around. And if you notice, my thumb is in the back of the neck. It's kind of in between my index and um, middle finger. So usually you want your, somewhere between here and here, your thumb on the back of the neck. Now you see a lot of players play like this, and there is a time and a place to bring your thumb over to get certain things. But at the beginning, I really want everybody to learn to get proper hand strength and to put their uh, fingers in the right place. Now, just doing this jumping jack is going to make, uh, for you advanced players, if you do this, make this a part of your practice routine, what's going to happen is this, this simple technique will end up making the songs you already know how to play better because you're overcoming uh, and some mechanical issues here and getting your eye hand coarsen together. The next thing you do with this jumping jack is to move it up the neck. So you can't tell that your hand moves and you're going up and down. And whenever you move the hand like that, the real key is this movement here. Once you learn how to get that smooth where you can move up and down the neck so you can't tell that your hand is moved, Again, for the advanced players, that's a, a big mechanical move and your solos again will be smoother and start sounding better. The next thing I always try to show people to do is to be able to play in the same fret and try to, you're trying to make each finger kind of sound the same, but each finger does have its unique tone. But again, you're learning that rocking motion and how to do that on the guitar. Again, that will show up in your advanced playing and make that better. Now, right now, I'm just playing with my fingers just to make a point. Um, now, I want to jump off the guitar just for a second so we dealt with the mechanics and talk about the musical alphabet. The, um, it's important to know your instrument from an intellectual standpoint as well, but not get too hung up on it. And i got to apologize. You're going to see my butt here. It's a little big, but that's okay. The musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it repeats. It keeps going on and, over, on and on and over again. So if I write this smaller, you'll see that it just keeps going on infinity both directions. So with music, you have to be able to think forwards and backwards um, in, doing, in doing this and knowing your fretboard. And I've come up with a thing called Universal Musical Law where uh, we're going to call each one of these letters in the musical alphabet a degree because that's what they use when you start learning your scale, major scales, etc. So we might as well start using that musical term degree. So A is a degree, B is a degree, etc. And on, on, in music we have what's called whole steps and half steps. And uh, the easy way for a guitar player to know the difference between those two guys is this. It's two frets. So if I play an A and I play a whole step up, two frets up, there's where B is. So A to B is a whole step. Now in the next letter in alphabet C, which is a half step, one fret. So two frets is a whole step, one fret is a half step. So the, the musical law that I came up with to help people understand the um, musical alphabet is everything's a whole step with two exceptions. And the two exceptions are right here at B and C and E and F. So everything else is a whole step. Okay, so, uh, so G to A is a whole step, and A to B is a whole step, and C to D is a whole step, and D to E is a whole step. And your, your B to C, E to F is your half steps. And that's important to know on the guitar. Um, on, on the guitar, uh, just to back up just a little bit, we do have names to the strings and numbers. I should explain that earlier, but we'll get to that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six is the numbers of the strings. So that's E, B, G, D, A, and E. Now, um, the way to start learning the process of thinking forwards and backwards, you, you know, a lot of people learn these names going from low sound to high sound, so six through one, which is every animal does good but elephants. 
And then a friend of mine uh, taught me a new one, which is Earl Ain't Dynamite, Goodbye Earl. So the students get a choice of which two they want to use to learn. But you, So whenever you think of this string, it's not your number one string, but it's your number six string. So you, you have to overcome that and know that. But one, two, three, four, five, six. High to low is your, how you count your numbers going up. But when you do Earl 8, Dime, My Goodbye, Earl, you're going six through one. So by knowing your names of your strings, and we know this is an E string, your one string, we're just starting the alphabet right here at E. And we know by this law that E to F is a half step or one fret. So an open string is zero. First fret is number one. So we know one fret up is F now in the musical alphabet. The next letter in the alphabet after F is G. We know that G to A is a whole step. So here's a whole step here. And then we know the next letter after G is A. That's a whole step. Two frets up again. A, B, whole step. B, C, there's that exception. The other, there's, that's, there's only two places where that happens. So B, C, one fret. C, D, another whole step, two frets. And D to E. And we're on the 12th fret, and we're on E, which is the same name as the open string. So if you've done your musical math correctly in doing your whole steps and half steps, you will end up on the same letter name as the open string. So and that's and that's the key right there. If you if you do if you get off anywheres and you think this is E, well and it's not the twelfth fret, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, then you know something's wrong. Number twelve, no matter what the string is, it's the same letter name as the open string. So E, E, B, B, G, G, D, D, A, A, E, E. So once you learn one E string, you already know the other E string. So you really only have to fi learn five strings. Just you have to listen to the pitches. The next thing about guitar uh, that makes it unique uh, compared to some other instruments is um, this E isn't just one place on the guitar. Because you know your musical alphabet, that E is right here on the fifth fret of the B string. That's why we use it for tuning purposes. It's also right here on this fret on the G string. It's also right here on the D string. And you can keep going up with the frets if you got enough fretboard to do that, uh, to find your E. So if you know where all your alphabet is and what's across from it, they'll help you read music or better understand how to communicate to another musician what your lick is. So if you're, say you want to teach someone else to play that lick, with you in the band, or you're just trying to teach it to a student, and they know their musical alphabet, you can say, well, I'm going A, C, D, and then I'm sliding back into D, C, A, G, A.